Greetings, Mavuno family. Uh, wherever in the world you are watching from, whether you're watching from home, whether you're watching from your office, whether you're in transit, uh, whether you're alone or with others, we are so, so glad that you can join us for worship today. My name is Pastor Moredi Wanjao, Pastor M. I'm the senior pastor of Mavuno Church. And I am so excited to welcome you. If this is your first time, you're a guest. Uh, please take the moment and just fill out our guest form. Uh, you will see the QR code on the screen. You can scan that in or follow. Just use the phone number on the screen as well. Uh, we'd love to know where you're watching from and also how we can pray for you. Uh, so just send us something and uh, we promise to pray for you this week. Uh, but in addition, if you would like to join one of our discipleship groups, you have online discipleship groups and you would like to be part of uh, those. Even if you're not a visitor, it's not your first time here, uh, please use the same phone number, use the same code, and then just write that in, and we would love to connect you with community, with transformed community that will help you be everything God wants you to be. Listen, as we prepare to listen to God's word, uh, I want to give us an opportunity to, to worship God with our giving. Uh, I am so super grateful for this family, for its generosity. You know, as I've been reflecting about the incredible things God has allowed us to do, in these last 19 years we've been together as a church, uh, I am just in awe of the way God has blessed this, uh, blessed the world really uh, through the ministry of Mavuno Church. And it's all because of your generosity. And my prayer for you is that God will bless you in every way so that you can be generous in every occasion and that many will be blessed through you. And so Father, I just want to thank you for every person here as we give our tithes and our offerings. I thank you that Lord, you've, you've blessed us so that we can be ble a blessing. And that, Lord Jesus, you're helping us to become everything you want us to be. I pray that, Father God, you are going to change this, uh, ch continue to change and teach us to think like you when it comes to finances. That, Lord, you will enrich us in every way so that we can be generous in even bigger ways. I pray that, Lord, you would bless us with kingdom wealth so that, Lord, we can, we can advance your gospel. We can advance the work of God in our generation. And I pray that, Lord, you would comfort those who are mourning today. You would encourage those who are discouraged that, Lord, this word that we're about to listen would be a lift us up. It would lift us up as a people. Uh, give us a new way of thinking and that, Lord, would leave this place different. I pray that every one of us would say, uh, this, this, <laughs> this is a day that has changed my life. There's a before and an after. And so we thank you, Lord, and we honor you and we pray these things in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus and God's people say, Amen. Hey, we're going through a sermon series and it's entitled Kingdomics, Building Prosperity God's Way. And we, we're basically learning about how we as God's family can build financial wealth in a way that honors God. Now, it's an unusual series. I said this last week because I'm not necessarily teaching us about how to manage our money, but I'm teaching us how to think about money. And we began by comparing the way the world thinks about money, uh, worldly economics, with kingdomics, the way God wants us to think about money, we learned that worldly economics enslaves, of necessity, it enslaves, while kingdom economics sets free. And then we learned that the first step, we, we, we started looking at the, the, the steps towards building sustainable wealth uh, as a community. And we said the first is a transformed mindset. That's because we all think in a faulty way about money, and wisdom is the only thing that displaces faulty thinking. Seek wisdom at all costs, we learned. And then last week, we learned that the second step towards building sustainable wealth God's way is through a transformed community because none of us is stronger than all of us. Now, we need to learn to work together in order to become a prosperous people. That's what we were learning. And all these messages, by the way, if you miss them for any reason, they're online on our YouTube page. You can catch them on my podcast, Pastor M, uh, on Spotify. And, 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 and even if, you, you, miss, even if you, you, you didn't miss them and you heard, I encourage you to listen over and over again because I believe God wants to reformat our minds and teach us to think differently from the world around us. Also, this uh, coming uh, Wednesday, uh, 5.30 p.m. is family night. We're going to have a special edition this Wednesday where we're going to be really talking about some of the questions that have come up uh, through this series, uh, some of the challenges people have been able to, to face. If you have any questions, uh, please share them with us. Uh, we'd love to be able to answer uh, any questions you have. So 5.30 p.m. Uh, East Africa time on any of our Mavuno socials and you'll be able to find us there. Welcome to family night. Now, next week, we're going to also be ending our series with prayer. Uh, it's going to be our final week of Kingdomics, and I'd like to invite you to come to the service with a symbol of the area you're trusting God for in financial, when it comes to financial breakthrough. It could be a copy of your college application, it could be your CV, it could be your title deed, 
It could be a business registration, a tender document, something you've applied for, whatever it is. Just have a symbol with you. And we're going to spend some time uh, in our service praying over those things symbolically. But today we want to look at the, th uh, the third and final step towards building sustainable wealth God's way. I want you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 6. It's an incredible story, by the way, and I think you're going to find some things out there that will really blow your mind like they did mine. Genesis 26, verse 1 to 6. It says, Now, there was a famine in the land, besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because Abraham obeyed me and did everything required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees, and my instructions. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. Now, the, the scenario being painted here is that there's a major famine. Things are bad. Everyone is fleeing the country. Everyone is going down to Egypt like they would. This is what people would do in the ancient world. They'd flee to Egypt. Uh, this happened many times in scripture because the Nile River meant they could grow crops even when it didn't rain. This Nile River was, it was uh, all the time in drought, uh, whether there was rain, whatever, there was always uh, a lot of water. And it's what made Egypt an ancient superpower. Those days, Egypt was a superpower. And, and, and God tells Isaac, don't do what everybody else is doing. <laughs> Don't run to Egypt. Stay right where you are and I'll bless you there. Now, I want you to understand this, that kingdomomics is understanding that wealth comes from God. It doesn't come from my job. It doesn't come from promotions. It doesn't come from money. I don't chase money. I pursue God's business and, God's, <laughs> and money chases me as I pursue. That's what the Bible says. Amen. So, so you don't have to worry about the place you're in. God is able to bless you right where you are. Let's skip to verse 12. Story continues. Isaac planted crops in that land, and the same year he reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich, and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. So all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up, filling them with earth. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, move away from us. You've become too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar, where he settled. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died, and he gave them the same names his father had given them. And then it says, Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the herders of Gerar quarreled with those of Isaac and said, the water is ours. So he named the well Essek, which means dispute, because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also. So he named it Sitna, opposition. And he moved on from there and dug another well and no one quarreled over it. And he named it Rehoboth, room. That's what Rehoboth means. And it says, now the Lord has given us room and we will flourish in the land. And from there, he went up to Beersheba. That night, the Lord appeared to him and said, I'm the Lord God. I'm the God of your father, Abraham. Do not be afraid. I'm with you. I'll bless you. I'll increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant, Abraham. And Isaac built an altar there, called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent and there his servants dug a well. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is that God did not tell Isaac to plant his crops in the time of the famine. What he told Isaac was to stay put. He says, I'll bless you here. But in response, Isaac took a bold step of faith and he planted his crops in the dry ground. There was no rain. There was no indication that the rain would come. But here's the crazy thing that happened. He reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. Now, I want you to notice, a hundredfold is not a hundred percent return. A hundred percent return is double <laughs> of what you invested. And that, by the way, in a year of famine is already in a crazy year. Right now, by the way, some of us are facing a year of famine in our finances because of all that happening globally. 
If you could get 100% return on your investment, return double what you invest, that's a big miracle, isn't it? That would have been a miracle. It's not 100%. It's not even a thousand percent return because that would be 10 times what he had planted. This is actually 10,000 percent return. What? God told Isaac not to go where the opportunities were. And Isaac obeyed. But he didn't just obey. He took a step of faith. Why? He understood that as long as God wanted him there, he could bless him wherever he was. Come on, somebody. When God places you where you are, he will bless you where he places you. Sometimes we look at how far other people are advancing and we get discouraged. We look at our old classmates and how far they've gone. We look at the mistakes and disappointments and we wonder what hope there is for us. We wish we had a different assignment, a different job, a different education. We grew up in a different family. We wish things were different. We wish God had given us a different calling or blessing from the one he's given us. But I'm here to tell someone today that our God is the God of 10,000% return. Our God is the God of 10,000% return. It's not what you have. It's who you're with that counts. Come on, somebody. So stop looking around at others. Stop wishing you were somewhere else. Start working with whatever God has given you. Can I hear someone say amen? Yeah, yeah. This, this is how we move away from scarcity thinking and move into abundance thinking. The other thing I noticed in this passage is that this passage has a lot of wells. Did you notice as we read just how many wells were there? The Philistines were envious when Isaac became wealthy. So what did they do? They blocked Isaac's wells. And Isaac, he was chased away from the land of the Philistines. And so he went back to his homeland. And what does he do? He reopens his father's old wells, which the Philistines had also blocked up because they were jealous of his father Abraham's wealth. Then he starts opening new wells of his own. And every time he opens one, the Philistines come and argue and try and take it over. He digs the first one, he gives it up. He digs the second one, he gives it over to them. Finally, he digs a third well and they can no longer keep up. And, and he declares that even though, uh, 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 even, even though he's been opposed, he said through that well, he and his people would flourish. That's what he declares. And the rest of the story is about God appearing to him and reestablishing his covenant with him until even his enemies make peace with him. And then guess what he does at the end of the passage? He digs another well. I mean, what's the significance of all these wells? Wells, wells, wells everywhere. What's up with these? You know, in an agricultural society, wells were very critical because they contained water, which was used to irrigate crops and water livestock. If you had a well, you were not affected by weather patterns like everyone else. You didn't care whether there was drought because you had water all the time. Now, here's the thing I discovered in this passage that I'd never seen before. It's very possible that the reason Isaac had thought of fleeing to Egypt in the first place was because his father's wells had been stopped up by the Philistines. In other words, the wealth of Abraham, which had depended on Abraham's wells, the Philistines had actually come and, dis and stopped those wells up. They had filled them up with rocks. And so Isaac realized he didn't have wealth and was about to relocate. But here's the thing that happened. Here's another thing I'd never seen before. The story doesn't actually tell us how God blessed him. I've always known that this man sowed in a year of drought, in a year of famine, and God gave him a hundredfold harvest. But it doesn't tell us how it happened. It just tells us God blessed him. But as you look at this passage, is it possible that one of the keys to God's extraordinary blessing was that Isaac was a well digger? Is that possible? You see, here's the thing. How do I know this? When the Philistines got envious, what did they do? The way they tried to block his success was by blocking his wells. So wells had something to do with this man's health, uh, wealth and the money he had. And this probably explains why after he was chased away by the Philistines, all he could do was dig more wells. So he reopened the old wells his father had dug in the ancient times. He dug new wells of his own. Uh, when they tried to stop him, he dug other wells. And when they tried to stop those ones, he dug others until they couldn't stop him anymore. It seems that Isaac understood that the key to economic prosperity for him and his people was to dig wells. You see, wells for him were the channels of prosperity through which God would bless him and his family. You know, I may have mentioned earlier, by the way, I think I mentioned this earlier. This entire series came out of meditating on how God used one of my mentors, Bishop Masika, who who went to an impoverished community that was entirely dependent on donor aid. 
and he turned it into a community of millionaires. If you've never been to Yata to see the Yata miracle, I tell you that's one of the things you need to do before you die. And as I was there watching all this, marveling at what this man, God had used this man to, to do, I say to myself, God, if you can do it with his people, surely, surely God, you can do it with this middle-class congregation called Mavuno. If you can take people who didn't even finish primary school and turn them into such prosperous people, Lord, you can do it with Christians who are in Mavuno Church. And, and, and here's the thing. One of the things that you are going to find when you go to Yata is that one of the key things the bishop did was to teach his people to dig water pans. He taught them how to dig water pans, which held water in the times of drought. And these became the equivalent of their wells, the channels of prosperity for their entire region. So the question to ask is what are the wells that God is asking us to dig in our own time? What are the wells that God is asking us to dig today? What are the channels of prosperity that will see God's people through even difficult times? As we've said, wells represent wealth infrastructure, uh, channels of prosperity for God's people. And I believe that in this season, God is leading us to dig several wells. I want to just share with you some of the wells that I believe God is calling us to dig as a church in this next season. The first is the Kingdom Business School. You know, our plan as a church is to develop a school of kingdom business as part of our current Mavuno Fearless Institute. Uh, our institute, the Fearless Institute, has so far focused on leadership development. We have a one-year leadership boot camp. Uh, some of you have gone through that. Uh, it's a phenomenal course for marketplace leaders, teaching you how to be a marketplace minister in wherever God has planted you. And then we also have a full-time one-year Discovery International, uh, which targets uh, younger leaders who are in transition, uh, want to understand how to position their lives so they have an impact the rest of their lives. But we want to expand the courses and not just have a school of leadership, but also have the Kingdom Business School. And the first program, by the way, is a faith-driven entrepreneur course. We mentioned that uh, earlier. Uh, it's an eight-week online course that is structured to help Christian entrepreneurs and professionals understand how to turn their business into God's business. I believe this is going to become the foundational course in the School of Kingdom Business. So we still have a few spaces left. So please make sure you sign up. The sign up is on the, uh, on the, on the screen. Uh, it will uh, give you, a, allow us to know who you are. And we want to make sure that we fill up the spaces and have the right people starting off this pilot class. And we're planning, by the way, to have many other, several other courses that form a regular part of this school that all of us will go through these courses. And those are some of the wells God is calling us to dig. Tell your neighbor, we're digging some wells. Yeah, this is what we're doing. We're digging wells. The second well that God is calling us to dig is what we call the Mavuno Soko. Now, some of you who are new at Mavuno, you, you may not have any experience with these, but we've already had quite a few of these over the years where members bring all their wares to church, uh, to the place where they gather, uh, and create a mini marketplace where we support each other's businesses. Now, I know there's been a, there have been a couple of people who are comfortable with this. There are people who say, well, Jesus kicked out money changers from the temple, so we should never mix business and spirituality. That's actually not the context of the story. That's not what Jesus was teaching. Uh, this was about the religious classes who had put hindrances to people's worship. I believe that as a community, we must grow spiritually, but we must grow economically as well. The Jews really believe that as well. And I believe the Sokos allow us the opportunity to grow deeper in our fellowship, to know who does what, so that we can support each other's businesses. And apart from the monthly circles, I want to challenge our campuses, all our physical campuses, to have a monthly circle in our campus. Just come and talk about your business and give each other opportunities to support one another. Perhaps the campuses can also designate a circle day each week. Some of our larger campuses have done this, I know, uh, where members have a, a, a church WhatsApp group and in a regulated way each week, there's a day or two where they just, it's a trade day. And people share what they do and they're able to support one another. We buy from one another. It can also be a place where people advertise for job opportunities. Somebody's looking for a job, uh, they can put it there. Or if you have job opportunities in your workplace, you can post them there and ensure that people are also joining up uh, and you're providing employment to people in your community. Uh, in addition to these campus socos, we also have a big soco during the Fearless Summit that's coming up uh, at the, uh, the beginning of July. And every year we have this massive soco where we invite, a soco really means market, by the way. And it's a great place where we bring uh, all the entire movement. We welcome people to come and show up there with their wares. We have a big village where we uh, showcase. And so if you haven't signed up for that and you're interested in showing us what you do, getting some customers from your business from this community, then please uh, do that as well. Because we're digging wells. We're digging wells for our people. And then the third one, and I'm really excited about this one, is the Mavuno Investment Group. 
You know, we're in the process right now of putting together an investment fund that will allow anyone who's a member of this church to invest and grow their wealth. And we're planning to pilot it over the next few months before we launch it. But my prayer is that it will allow every member of this community to invest for short-term emergencies, to put together money for bigger investments like buying a car, buying land, uh, uh, buying a house, uh, to prepare for retirement, and then to create financial freedom. And, and a great definition, by the way, I learned this uh, definition of financial freedom. I love it very much. It says, uh, financial freedom is having the resources you need to carry out your God-given assignment and to be a blessing to the world. So you have enough resources to achieve everything God wants you to achieve and designed you to achieve and to be a blessing to others around you. And that's what we're going to do. We want to create these funds that will help every single one of us achieve that. And they're going to be coming up in the next few months as some of the exciting initiatives. Because we're digging wells. Tell your neighbor we're digging wells. We want to become like Isaac and dig wells uh, for prosperity. And in addition to these exciting initiatives, we foresee other future wells, uh, things like an insurance product to, ex uh, to, pro to provide uh, inexpensive insurance for members of this church, a charity trust to help members impact the poor together in significant ways. We're in the early stages yet of this digging well process, but I'm excited about how it's going so far. I'm excited about the testimony so far, and, I can, and, and I, I'm excited about the potential that I see in it. I believe this time next year, we're going to be in a completely different place as a church. Now, some of you have skills in different areas. We'd love for you to come up and volunteer your skills to uplift our community. Let's dig wells together. My goodness, the communities that do well in life, the ones that prosper are the ones that dig wells together. Now, I want to conclude my message. I know I challenged us today about becoming well diggers. And next week, we're going to be praying for our businesses. We're going to be praying for our careers. Come with a symbol of that area you're trusting God for financial breakthrough and invite a friend. But I want to conclude in prayer with just this picture. Imagine a community of generous people who are serving God joyfully. Imagine generous people being part of a community like that. Imagine a community where no one is jobless or in need, but all have enough for themselves and to be a blessing to others. Oh my goodness, it happened in the book of Acts. It can happen in our time. Imagine a community of people who are not just passionate about changing society. They don't just say they want to change the world, but they actually have the resources to do it. Oh my goodness. Imagine a community where one family comes up to their pastor and says, Pastor, don't worry about doing a fundraising for the building. My family and I already have it covered. Come on, somebody. Can you see it? I mean, this is a community that God is calling us to be. And I believe that every single one of us, as we walk this journey, of building sustainable wealth as a community together, of understanding kingdomomics, thinking about finances God's way, and moving away from the, the way the world does its finances. That we're going to see this revolution coming to pass as we dig wells together. I want to conclude in prayer and to pray for, uh, uh, for every one of us who's here. And the first person I want to pray for, maybe you're here, you've never given your life to Jesus. And I know, I mean, that's, that's not what I've been talking about today. But maybe you've never given your life to Jesus. And as you listen to this message, somehow you just have felt a tug and recognize, my goodness, I really need to belong uh, to Christ. I need to give my life to Him. I need to belong to the community of God's people. Uh, maybe you even once did, but you walked away from that faith. But today I would like to give you an opportunity to pray and ask God to come into your life and to be the master of your life. And here's the thing, he's so amazing. He created you already for a special purpose. And as he comes into your life, as you surrender to him, he's able to come in and help you become everything that he created you to be. I made that decision years ago and I've never regretted it. Best decision I ever made. And I'd love to pray for you. If this is you, I'm going to ask you to say this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I come to you today to surrender my life to you. Forgive my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to be the person you created me to be. From today, I am a child of God. I am saved and I will walk with you, with your help, all the days of my life. For I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, we are so proud of you. 
Uh, we would love to get to know you. So please, again, just use the number on the screen. Uh, use the, the, the symbol on the screen, the, the code on the screen. Uh, let us know. Just tell us, I prayed this prayer, Pastor M, I prayed this prayer. Uh, would you pray for me? And hey, I'm, I commit myself. We will not only pray for you, we would love to send you material that will help you take the next step and the next step to becoming everything and every, the person that God created you to be. So congratulations, best decision that you've ever made. Make sure you send us that number, uh, uh, use that number, send us, even if it's a WhatsApp uh, text, just send us a text, let us know, and we would love to uh, enable you, give you some tools to help you to take the next step. So, so excited about everyone who's prayed that prayer. And Father, I want to just now pray for the rest of us, the whole community. I pray that, Lord, this indeed will be a community that loves and supports each other. That, Lord, this will be a community where we grow together spiritually and economically. That we will be an unstoppable community. I pray that, Lord Jesus, regardless of the droughts, regardless of the famines, regardless of the difficult conditions that will come upon this earth, that, Lord, there will be a people who would prosper regardless. There will be a people who would uh, yield, would have a hundredfold return every time because their God is with them. As we walk together as your people, guided by wisdom that you give to us, are walking together as a community that protects one another. Lord, walking in the structures and the wells that you've given us to, to be channels of our prosperity. I pray that, Lord, we would never lack. I pray that, Lord, you're going to make this a community that will be a model community. And I pray that, Lord, the gospel will be spread in our generation because of the people of this church. And so God's people, I pray for you. As you go out into this week, may you prosper in every way. May favor be upon you. May God's grace be upon you. May you experience his goodness in everything that you do. And next week, as we show up together to pray over our businesses, may you be full of testimonies of look what the Lord has done. And so I bless you, God's people, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And God's people say it together, Amen.